So, yeah. I hope I'm very, um, I hope I'm audible. Can everyone hear me? You, you are, Dr. Akri. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, um, uh, today, the title of today's talk is Significance of Integrating Safety into Engineering Process and Operations. Um, and this forms part of our theme three on safety, health, and environment, which also marks the last um, presentation within that theme and for the year. So our speaker today is um, Omoba Oluwafemi Adeleke, who is an alumni of the prestigious University of Manchester, United Kingdom, an exceptional keynote speaker, a seasoned safety professional, Alumni of the University of Manchester, he sits as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Nigerian Alumni and also occupies the position of the Secretary. He has garnered experience with ExxonMobil, an oil and gas giant with headquarters in Houston, Texas, United States, and other reputable world-class oil and gas companies. He has also worked with Green Power Overseas Limited, a renewable energy and technology-based firm. World Energy Prospecting Nigeria Limited, Safety Six Limited, and many more Nigerian-based firms where he exhibited exceptional leadership performances. He's passionate about safety, which he exhibited during his service to the nation during his NYSC days, when he started the Going Green Niger CDS Group, a medium he used in educating participating schools on the need to always keep their environment clean, healthy, and healthy, safe, and green. He also went ahead to donate flowers to the Lagos State Government as a contribution to the Babatunde Raji Fashalas led administration's goal of planting trees all across Lagos. Omobal Luafemi Adeleke is also a renewable energy expert and AOFAQ certified first aider a NIVOSH UK certified safety professional, an ISO certified lead auditor in occupational safety health, occupational health and safety management system and quality management system. He has held various leadership positions as a student in the past, spanning from President, Society of Petroleum Engineers, Novena University Chapter, Section 102, Wari, Delta State immediate past chair, performance and evaluation committee, and present chair, ethics and privileges of the Nigerian Association of Petroleum Exploration, Explorationists. Young professional arm. He is also a member of many professional oil and gas safety societies, both in Nigeria and abroad, and he has facilitated various training under these professional platforms. He is currently a managing partner at Safety Smart Africa, where he consults for the organization for clients in the oil and gas, renewable energy, security, real estate, healthcare, and hospitality. Examples of such organizations include Keystone Bank, New Hall, Dover Heights Limited, Lex UK, Nigerian Events Industry, Nitio Limited, Capidium Learning, Habitat 360, to name a few. Safety Smart Africa is an international broad, an international brand, I beg your pardon, whose mission is to revolutionize safety in Africa by teaching, educating, and consulting in areas of health, safety, security, and environment so that the value of lives in Africa can be restored. So um, thank you very much, uh, speaker. And um, Please feel free to share your slides and start when you're ready. So I'll just stop sharing my slides. And um, I believe you have the rights to share your slides. Okay, let me see. Yes, screen. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity, the invite. I am very, very grateful for the opportunity to allow me to stand on the existing protocol. It's glad to be here. And like I said, I'm elated. Coming back to Manchester, that's where I started. And I'm coming back again to Rochester, like they call it. So it gives me great joy. So uh, the topic, significance of, uh, let, me just, let me track this, okay. Significance of integrating safety into engineering process and operations. So why this topic? I think it's coming at the right time because looking at uh, uh, the incident that happened in Lagos recently, it gives reason to say, okay, where are gaps? What should we do as professionals? What is expected of us in terms of safety? What's the implication of ignoring it? So I think this is coming timely and it's a, uh, it's very key. So we'll be talking about trying to show light, throw light on understanding what safety is, just short briefly, history of uh, safety, why is it significant in processes and operations? What are the applicable laws looking at the UK and Nigeria? Yeah? And look at the standard that applies that we can adopt as professionals to ensure that uh, we stay ahead of our game. Because understanding this standard that can help us integrate safety into our activities as engineers, we're going a long way in uh, exhibiting us or portraying us as world-class uh, professionals. So what is safety? I don't know if anyone can share what they think is safety. So they ask me, yeah, what's your definition of safety? Anyone wants to speak? What is safety to you? Okay, I can see Titi's hands up. Okay, Titi, the floor is yours, please. Okay, hello everyone. Um, so I'll yeah. say that safety is um, any any activities or any measures that we put in place to ensure that you know any risks that we are exposed to are um, mitigated as much as possible, basically, yeah. Thank you very much, that's a very good answer. Okay, to continue, we can see the pitch, the faces on this screen. What do we think this, what story do you think these faces are saying to us? Can someone just share, pick two different faces and let's see. What story are these faces telling? Okay, Rita, thank you. Rita, you have the floor? Possibly because they don't feel very safe. I didn't get that, please. I said some of the faces appear very happy, whereas some do not appear very happy, probably because they don't feel very safe. Thank you very much for that. Any other contribution? Okay, not to waste time. You see, safety gives joy. When you feel safe, you can achieve your goals, but when you don't feel safe, you've got a lot of things to worry about. Your mind is distracted, you're sad. You can even now, you see people saying, people are getting into a state of depression, anxiety, panic. And this is uh, leading to a lot of breakdowns in people around. Um, before you know it, you see now the rates are increasing, numbers are increasing. The hospital records are having this and it's alarming. And it's because safety or application of safety in things around, in processes, in activities is dwindling. And you see the rate of chronic illnesses are increasing. So safety is key. So what is safety? In simple uh, words, safety is a state of being safe. It has explained to us, but we can see again, the state of being safe and the condition of being protected from harm or other danger. So anything that could 
endanger you physically, emotionally, whatever way it's going to come that is going to endanger you, that is something that's putting you in an unsafe state. So it can be an, a hazard that is on safe act or safe condition. So safety can also refer to the control of recognized hazard in order to achieve an acceptable level of risk. You can see from the definition by the social psychology of risk, safety speaks to sensitivity to operations, being able to ask open questions, finding the best in order. So your teammates, your colleagues, people that work with you, your employees, your, your employer, can they ask questions, can they work as a team? Finding the best in others, entertaining doubts, thinking critically, and this, all of these are essential in helping us to uh, build a safe uh, environment, and like I say, a safe culture. So to continue, I'll speak on the history. When did safety even start? How did we get to this state? I was saying, okay, safety. Because if you look at Africa, we're still growing. We're still adopting safety, the gradual thing. You see the developed world, you see safety is key, it's vital, it's essential. And that's how you see it in the value, the place on life, on even animals, the value they place on safety in terms of business and a lot. So where does safety start? So let's go back into history. Uh, we see this started from somewhere too. Safety started in the 18th century. And this began when there was this technological adv advancement. Companies, uh, the manufacturing uh, business started, I mean, technology started, instead of the usual manual way of doing things, industrialization setting. And before you know it, uh, the labor was needed to get these things done. So uh, people came in from a lot of places, far and wide, to towns, to uh, what do you call it? To work in these factories, this uh, place where they're manufacturing uh, items. For example, you have where they're manufacturing uh, matches. And before you know it, people are suffering from uh, a lot of uh, health issues. We have uh, young uh, people, I mean, uh, children being amputated. Because before you know it, we're probably trying to do something, they put their hand into the machine and the limb is chopped off. You can see the picture here, people are developing fussy jaw. So it's like you have your family go to work to make money. Then they are coming back with a lot of health and safety issues and you need money, Not we don't want to lose our loved ones. So it's the, the clamor for safety in these operations led the government to uh, bring into play what we call safety now, because it was essential, it was needed, because the work-related accidents were rising, fatalities were happening, and people were not happy with this, so government had to intervene. So this brought about, I would say, what we have, the health and safety executive uh, law in the UK, the Act. You see, it started with the railway inspectorate, factory inspectorate, mines, explosive, and it has graduated to uh, get a safety, safety executive uh, act now, safety at work act, act. So it's, it was a gradual process. They were developing, they were improving, identifying the gaps and bringing in the needed change. So what's big, a big overview of uh, this agency? It's United Kingdom government agency that is responsible for the encouragement, regulation, and enforcement of workplace health, safety, and welfare, and for research in operational risk in Great Britain. It was formed in the year 1975, located in uh, Merseyside, England, the parent department, the Department for Works and Pensions. <clears throat> and key document that is supporting their, uh, their being coming to existence is the Health and Safety at Work Act which everyone must ensure they comply with. So, like we said, when you have people developing these fussy joy issues, getting their limbs caught, losing very young uh, people, maybe 11 year old children, teenagers, and the demand for a change, you had all these 
demand bringing about this health and safety requirement. Recently, you had this building collapse that has been recorded in the UK, and you see the government is planning a new government agency known as the National Building Safety Regulator, which is responsible for building regulation and construction industry professionals' competency, and it's going to come into effect after 2023. So you see they are improving, they are evolving. So let's throw light about this Health and Safety at Work Act of 1974. This law sets out the framework for managing workplace health and safety in the UK. The Act defines the roles and responsibility of the employer, of the employee, of everybody that is sync with the business, or every professional, and like I said, employer, employee. Also, it requires that you train provide training, you as an employee, you follow the rules, the guidelines, the procedure, your job description, provision of welfare for staff at work, a safe environment where people can work and the right information for them to work. It just seeks to protect everyone at work. Other regulations that we should understand guides our activities as professionals in the engineering field and other sectors, other field is the Workplace regulation of 1992, display screen equipment regulation, and management of health and safety regulations, the riddle. This even stipulates that, okay, this kind of accidents must be reported. Here's the timeline. This is who should report it. For example, some examples of accidents that must be reported include occupational diseases, fatal and non fatal injuries, dangerous occurrences, incidents that result in some, uh, someone not working uh, for about seven days. Incidents that involve gases. So, throwing more light into, like I said, regulations, the agency that as a regulator, looking at Nigeria, you see the main regulations currently in force, which govern the health and safety regime for upstream oil and gas, is the Petroleum Act, that's the law of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, as amended, and the Minerals Oil Safety Regulation, 93, as amended. See, the minimum legal requirements relating primarily to health and safety welfare of the workforce, which must be taken into account when you're planning the execution of construction works or whatever works engineering you're doing, is also uh, provided for under the Labor Act of uh, 2004, the Factory Act 2004, and the Employee Competition Act 2010, and also the National Building Code 2006. So engineering is wide as a professional, just look at which part of these uh, laws apply to what I do as a professional. So the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund Management Board helps to implement the Employee Competition Act. So if an employee, employee is injured at work, we try to uh, ensure that they are compensated. Maybe they are injured, they are disabled, they can't work again, but is as just of the work they ensure that they are compensated. And currently the labor safety health and welfare bill is awaiting the president's consent. This bill seeks to repeal the factory act and when passed into law, will provide a more comprehensive occupational health and safety relationship in Nigeria because you see this uh, factory act is way, 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 way overdue. A lot of changes have evolved and at this time it's integrated. So this is what the new uh, bill well, which is uh, before the president is trying to achieve. So for Lagos State, as a member of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, you should know that for Lagos State, we have Lagos State Safety Commission. It was integrated on the 5th of May, 2009, and they're responsible for coordinating all government matters relating to the safety of lives and property of Lagosians. It's vested with powers to formulate policies, provide advisory and be regulatory body on all safety related issues in the state. That's the legal state. So coming to standards or our processes and operations, we know as engineers, process or processes are key to us. And what is about process? Process are just bunch of activities that are inter interrelated, where you bring your input, your 
controls your resources, which would be money, people, trying to integrate all of them. So the controls can be your guidelines, your rules, your plan, your uh, operating procedure. Then integrating all this together and bringing an output. And this output, not just any output, but output that has been defined from start. So you have to fulfill the output you desire to get from, from scratch. All this requires safety to be integrated because if not integrated, <laughs> issues can evolve. As a picture, I, I don't know, I think I, post, I posted before, but I, I, maybe I probably changed slide. It's a picture of the construction uh, project that was going on in the Koi Lagos that uh, collapsed. The building that collapsed, the 360 construction uh, that collapsed recently. My cousin was uh, a contractor on that project, was to help uh, install uh, biodigesters for the building. And he just took, he and like five, six of his staff just stepped out of the building just to get a lunch. And uh, before you know it, the building came crashing. So he lost one of his workers in that building. So what does this tell me as a professional? What does this tell us as engineers? Tell us that for every process, that means every activity is well broken down. So from your planning, maybe you're doing your PNID, looking at, okay, where are the issues there? You're trying to do your asset, trying to see where are the potential issues in terms of safety that could arise? And how do we nip this in the bud? What control measures are we putting in place? What, what resources are we needing for this? What uh, operating procedures? What manuals, what plans, what guidelines do we need to put into this? What resources that will eventually help us to get that world-class product that the customer, the person we're servicing will be satisfied with? So that things we should look at as uh, professionals in the engineering uh, sector. So, Talking about safety, I said there are lots of uh, standards that can help us uh, integrate safety into our processes, into our activities. We have the Edge Mobility Operation Integrity Management System. We have the Chevron's Operations Excellence Management System. We have the OSHA. We have the Shell HSC Management System. And you have the ISO for 2001-2018. The ISO is universal, so that's why a lot of people try to adopt it because it ensures that once you are ISO certified in Iraq, that means any company, for, for if they are, whether, whether they're in the US and the UK, will agree that you are a world-class organization or as a professional where you understand this standard, they know, oh yes, you are someone that we can put on this job because you understand the significance of safety to our process as an organization. So what does this ISO uh, help with? You see, you try to look at the scope or the areas of your operation, of your processes that you want to integrate safety. Helps you to look at the context of the organization, the leadership, planning, support, operations. Help you to evaluate performance and see how you can improve uh, how you perform to your date based on what you set to achieve. A sound process safety management program is essential to any business as it helps to manage the integrity of operation system and processes. It helps you to handle as other substances, as other processes, apply the right, uh, appropriate, uh, good design principles, engineering operating practices. So why is it of essence? Why do we need to integrate safety in our processes? Well, it helps to prevent major disasters involving catastrophic uh, release of toxic, reactive, flammable, explosive chemicals. Like I said, the example I gave of where my cousin almost lost his life when the building, the 21 story building came crashing. It would have been avoided if safety had been integrated in the process. So when you're planning all the activities you want to do, you ensure that safety is applied. You plan the project and integrate safety in all the activities. You don't play lip service to it. You put the resources that you needed, is if it's a trained people, if it's the money, everything, the equipment, everything, you integrate it. You don't cut cost. This will, help, will have helped avoid this uh, catastrophe that uh, occurred. Also helps to identify and help you also close out gaps. So the weakness in compliance in terms of regulation, where is it that you are not uh, 
applying the regulations. You see, someone here was talking about uh, participating in an audit at the start of this uh, meeting. If he didn't have the understanding of what safety is and how it should be applied to the system, the company will have gotten that certification. And the company would have been able to say, okay, yes, we are a world-class organization and we're committed to safety and people can try us out. People can do business with us. People can trust us with the lives of people uh, in the organization, can trust us with their business, can trust us with a lot of things. It helps to prevent a situation where the public just have to tolerate. Because you see in areas, countries where safety is not integrated into operations like race, you see, People just have to keep tolerating. People just keep tolerating. And before you know it, it just keep going from bad to worse. So it helps to manage the increasing amount of people, environmental regulation and business growth. So issues that could arise from there, it helps to minimize it. You have to reduce risk, prevent human injury, mitigate against loss, sustain value because the value that you get as an individual, because you can speak, you can identify areas that could become threats to you and say, okay, yes, this is an issue, please. Let's close it out. You have to boost productivity. We saw the picture of uh, uh, that uh, was at the previous slide. Some people were happy, some people were sad. When safety is not there, productivity hey, cannot be achieved. Efficiency cannot be achieved because people's mind are distracted. You can also be able to achieve high quality product on time at lower cost. Also improve shareholder value. So, what does process and uh, operational safety, what does it help us to achieve? Like I've said, employee involvement and participation. They feel, oh yes, I was involved in this because the standards of integrated safety requires it. It's like you run a house. The father or the husband is just doing whatever he wants to do. The children are doing whatever they want to do. Before you know, the house is divided. But when they all together, they sing together, they bond together, everybody's involved. You have organizations where Top managers make decisions and things just go. You have occasions where the manager just feels, oh, what's my advice feels, this is the way we'll go about it. I'm going about it. And that is all. For example, I go back to this building that collapsed too. If the end of the business, I said, okay, who are the people that are needed for this building to be uh, built safely and to meet the world-class standard that I choose to achieve? I say, okay, we need safety people, we need quality products, we need quality this, quality that. And it involves them, you get feedback from them. Because I know from what I got from my cousin, he was telling me that uh, the man was saying, oh, I need to do this work now, 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 now. And it was like, oh, sir, this site is not ready for this. It's not prepared. So they were still arguing that. The man said, okay, let me wait. It was that wait, they said, okay, let me go out to eat. That was when the crash occurred. So this, Integrating safety into our process and operations help us to ensure we involve uh, employees, not just involve them, get them to participate. We carry out asset education and risk assessment. We ensure that we uh, put in place change management, especially in projects, when there are modifications, whatever things they change, the change management process is integrated. We review uh, whatever control measures are put in place. We put, put in place an emergency response plan. The building came crashing and there was no emergency response plan. You have been in a 21 story building, you didn't plan, oh, these are the responders, these are the responders, uh, agents around. Maybe you, you probably have an agreement with like five hospitals around because you look at the volume of people that are coming to work. All the things are what this uh, integrating safety into our prison operations will help us to achieve. Also, help us to put a, in place the right documents prepare the right documents, operation procedure, that we guide people that are working in this activity on how to operate the equipment, carry the activities safely. Also, we help us to manage contractors, ensure that we achieve a compliance, carry out incident investigation, train people for the right competence that they need, that means the training, the attitude, the knowledge, the experience, everything they need for the job. Ensure there's leadership commitment, comply with legal and strategic compliance, identify interested parties. And interested parties by definition are people that feel our action or inaction can affect them. So it's just them feeling it, they're just interested parties. We have to put them into place. Monitoring operational variables, 
another component of uh, the process safety. So we'll talk about the 5001, like I said, talk about the scope, the contest leadership, planning, support, operation, performance and evaluation improvements. So what does contest speak to? Talked about, okay, which area of your business that you feel, okay, we need to build this. Understand the needs and expectation of your workers and other interested parties. So what's the needs of me as an engineer, a manager, or even just an officer, it's just an engineer with no whatever uh, assignments leadership role with me. What do I owe people that are working with me? That means my colleagues. What are their needs and expectations? How do I ensure this is closed out? The interested parties, who are they? Is it the community people? Is it people that work with me? Is it people in the office? So we should have interested parties are both internal and external. The workers, the unions, top management, board directors, suppliers, contractors, external can be community, consumers, regulators, legislators. So just have to look at all these people, both internal and external, and looking at what are the areas we can meet their needs, or we can come to a, a, an agreeing table, come to the table and agree on whatever we think is our expectation from each other. That's one thing safety helps us to close out in our processes and operations. So also showing leadership commitment, because as leaders, as engineers, we are role models, people look up to us. You can't say, oh, I was on this project and it collapsed. Ah, well, I didn't know about it. About it. No, you have a role to play. We're all leaders, we should take ownership. So leadership as champions of the system and providing necessary resources to protect workers from harm. If you're a worker, you probably feel you're safe speaking out. Oh, we need this, we need that to ensure that we're safe. Also having a safety policy with helps to guide, uh, gives you a sense of direction and gives a framework to how the organization wants to achieve its objective. And also effective communication of what we tend to want to achieve. Also integrating uh, health, uh, safety into various roles. So every engineer has a role they play in terms of safety. It's not just saying, oh, the safety officer on this field is just assigned to this. No, what is your role? This must be integrated in our job roles as a business owners integrating employee, em, employees uh, JD, as employee, uh, employees we should ensure that we try and be uh, active players participating in this and ensuring that we contribute our quota in uh, applying safety measures that have been identified. The aim of the health and safety management system is to identify and assess health and safety hazards that exist in the workplace and also put in place the appropriate measures. So we should understand that it is not just the book, it's about application implementation, and this helps to ensure that the process, the hazards involved in these processes are taken out and the control measures are put in place. Also, this standard tells us that it's vital that we plan. And when we plan, we identify hazard, we carry out risk assessment. Risk assessment, by the way, is a likelihood trying to assess, we just have to look at the likelihood that assess, uh, but by, by the severity. For example, someone that is working uh, as low height, like for example, just on a stool, and someone that is working on a five-story building, you can see that the likelihood that both of them will fall, it's there. The severity, how severe will the injury be when they fall? The person working at five height would eventually get uh, to suffer severe uh, injury. And that's if the person does not become a fatality compared to one that just working in stood. So this standard they to identify this. And when we sink it into our uh, processes, it helps us to remove all those issues that could cause us harm. The standard is, is one that look at process approach. So breaking down this process, like I said, into various activities and ensuring that uh, we identify issues supplying the inputs in terms of resources, uh, in terms of uh, all the things that are needed, and ensuring we have a agreed uh, output. Depth of determining legal requirements and plan for the objectives. Also, it helps us to carry out performance evaluation. So as the process person, how have we performed to a date? What did we say we would do? How did we say we would do it? Did we fulfill this? Did we comply with this? For saying we are calibrating this equipment, did we calibrate it? 
we're going to do test this number of times. Did you do that test? We're going to say we'll do a minimum of this kind of uh, inspection visit to this premises, to this facility. Do we, do we do that? If we say we are going to do whatever servicing, did we do it? Looking at our activities, how do they impact the environment? How are we managing change? When we are procuring items, are we applying the safety standard or just probably just say, okay, whatever goes, just ensure it fits in. We say recently people are talking about houses in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, in Lekki, who are saying these, most of these houses don't meet standard. Well, the story of the Lekki Gardens at the time, and you see every day buildings collapse. We have issues, uh, for example, in, uh, if you look at the oil industry, the Piper Alpha, just a bridge or a poor communication. You see, lives were lost. So understanding that our input can destroy a whole lot of things is essential. And this management system, this safety management system, when applied, help us to identify these gaps and ensure they are closed out. Management review, so as management, how have the organization, as the organization uh, performed in terms of uh, relevant issues, needs of interested parties, compliance, and all others. So providing the resources, communication, internal and external, documenting information. Like we said, it's not look at documented information. What you said you want to document and what the said we should document. Are you putting them into that documentation uh, uh, format? Maybe soft or hard, but are you keeping them for evidence purpose? Is it being well controlled? So you have a control number for them. So internal audit, audit your system. So I think that you can audit yourself. How am I performing? As an engineer, am I, have I improved in the past three, four, five months? This year, what is my improvement drive? Have I achieved it? My improvement goal? Audit yourself. Audit your performance till date. If you take me globally, am I competitive? Am I just competitive locally in my office, my place of work? Organizations to business owners who should look at this and try because sometimes business shy from this because they feel, oh, uh, well, I do, let's just keep doing it. Uh, the employees feel, oh, let's not do this. They might bring out a gap and maybe they might sack me or they might give me a query. But it's not, uh, all this should not be punitive. Just for us to, uh, what we call fact find, see where the gaps are and ensure we improve for the betterment of the system. So when we audit, we'll probably identify area of improvements, non-conformity. Non-conformity speaks to failure to fulfill a particular requirement, which might be the standard requirement, or what your organization say you will fulfill, or maybe what uh, has been laid down uh, by the government and which you must comply with. And uh, non-conformity can be major or minor. Major are probably you bridging what you say you will do, or bridging legal uh, compliance. Minor, just uh, some violation, that probably would not affect the business in any way, but have their own impact, though uh, very uh, little. So corrective actions, looking at what are the areas that I want to probably correct in interim and putting preventive actions too into place. So as an engineer, which areas have I played well? Which area have I integrated safety in my operation? Which area, we should look at it in the wheel, uh, like which area have I protected people, the lives, properties that work with me. Because at the end of your day, is a big end of the day is about how do we add value? How do we protect? How do we preserve? How do we make people happy coming to work? And ensuring that we look at this and always ensure we do what we call continual improvements, trying to rejig the puzzle and ensure that we do better. Because at the end of the day, it's about your brand protection. Because if you don't protect your brand and something goes wrong, all you build, labor to build. You can imagine what we've gone through from where we from Cradle, when we went to school, went to the institution, studying overnight, burned midnight candle, eventually trying to become whatever we want to become, get to be engineers, get to work in organizations. And eventually one day you do something and everything crashes and they call you, who's involved in this project? Is it engineer? So, 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 so. Will you be proud? Or will you just want to run away because you know your legacy has been ruined? You know you don't have any integrity at that time. And the way to protect it, like I said, is integrating safety 
into our process because with that, we can protect our brand and ensure we continually improve. So also, it is good for economic reasons, legal reasons, moral and ethic reasons. And with that, we can ensure that uh, we are engineers that are not just competitive, but are also doing our quota and ensuring lives and property are protected and uh, our organizations continually grow and achieve our uh, stated uh, targets and uh, agendas. Thank you for listening. I'm open to questions. Thank, thank you very much for that um, wonderful uh, insight into uh, safety. Um, I'm sure you saw some of the digital clubs that um, our participants um, offered you for that beautiful talk. Thank you very much. Oh, I think, I think we, have, we have questions on the chat, uh, and we thought that if you could, uh, if you're able to assess them, do you want to? Okay, okay. So I see. Yeah. Okay, so okay in the interest. Okay, okay. So. I'm coming. Okay, in your experience, how will you rank this as a primary cause of fatal accidents in the Nigerian construction industry? Uh, culture, weak regulations, corruptions, betrayal of law. Okay, so I think uh, as uh, with my years of experience, I think I will always take it down to uh, weak regulations. Not really weak regulations. I think implementation, because we have all these regulations. It's until when something goes wrong. That's why it does the book and they try to implement. So as a, in terms of uh, uh, the nation as a whole, I would say weak regulation. In terms of organization, I would say is management uh, issue because management, top management has to be interested. If top management is not interested, the issue will always be there because I run a construction company and I say, I want to be committed because there are lots of people in construction. You have the Gibata construction. Uh, and all of that uh, examples that are into construction. We have a lot, a lot of people in the engineering space, but some stick to the standard, okay, want to stay with this. How this might be expensive, what you do might be expensive. You see oil and gas companies that are involved in oil and gas uh, construction, maybe EPC. Some want to stay to it, or probably some just want to say, okay, we'll do whatever I want to do. Government is not helping us. So I will probably stay implementation implementation comforts, then culture, culture. Corruption too plays a key part, but culture too can drive down corruption because if you're not paying, some companies say, we're not going to bribe anybody, you stick to it. When the government officials push and push and push, then it's time they just agree that, oh yes, we can't push these guys off, just have to live with them. So I think that is my take on that. Uh, I'll come back to that if you have any other, if you probably feel you probably want to ask more questions, Okay, the example of process created of the oil and gas majors who have deeply developed and strictly implemented and adopted of this process, no special knowledge. Okay. Largely from experience and including by the appearance. So, 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 so. Okay. Okay. How do you recommend Nigeria professional effectively apply and enforce this principle? So, for example, you have to understand what this principle is saying. Like I said, understand what the policy, what does do you have a policy or what do you think a policy should a policy should contain? First of all, ask yourself, understand that. What is top management or the person you're working for, the guys you're working for, what are they expected to provide for you? So for example, maybe provide safety gears, provide a safe environment to work and everything. Something I like to tell people is, the work environment in Nigeria can be very crazy. You may probably work in a place where the culture is not so positive. But what I think you owe yourself is, while you're trying to walk around that environment before you probably get involved and you start working that, yeah, exhibiting that kind of style, try to improve your skill because with that skill, you can move to a better environment and ensure you work better there because uh, a lot of issues because some people are probably young engineers, no experience, no phone to run their own business or probably get uh, that skill. Try and acquire knowledge. So you can probably, with time, apply to better places where you can avoid those issues. And with that, you can work as a professional because there are lots of bottlenecks. You probably want to do this and the business is saying, oh, don't bring this here. I'm not interested. So basically, it's about trying to understand what all these standards say, what 
is the employer supposed to provide me as an employee? What is my role as an employee while working? These activities that I'm supposed to do, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to apply? What does the standard say? With that, you are knowledgeable. And with that knowledge, it gives you that advantage to ask and demand what is rightfully yours. And event you are not getting it, you know, oh, this is not the place for me. I need to step up to a better system. And if something probably speak to other people in the system to show that it is improved, or probably society where they can intervene, you do that. But when you are you lack the knowledge, you can demand what is rightfully yours or even implement what will guarantee your safety and that of others. So to the next one, thank you for your talk. What can Nigerian own them abroad contribute to ensuring that engineering is implemented to international standards? So, like I said, this is knowledge. So get whatever knowledge you want to apply. Are you looking at the operation security management system of OIMS? Are you looking at uh, the, the OSHA? Are you looking at the ISO? So look at all these things. What are they saying? So as a professional, you will say, okay, you are committed to doing this, no matter what happens. Let's not forget that sometimes you get some, you'll be burned sometimes because there are areas that will probably be beyond your control and you probably uh, can't, do, can't have a say there. It might affect maybe your income. At that time, I may not make, make that money for that business. But I'm looking to turn them and say, okay, this is not what I want to take part of. We know, for example, we talk about this uh, building collapse. There was a letter that was circulating and the company said they were, they can vouch for the first building but the second building they can't vouch for it and the, the letter was trending and you see that company now we say oh people will say this company is a responsible engineering company so you have to be ready to say okay this is our stand the problem we have in nigeria is because most of us as professionals now don't have any stand we just go with the swing business owners come they say this is how i want to do it people are suffering the processes are not okay Maybe your operations, you probably need diaphragm to get things working. The owner said, ah, we don't have it now. Maybe you need to go for training. But she said, just keep working. You need someone that is experienced. They say, okay, I just can just bring my brother. Let me bring my brother work it. Or bring my uh, family, my relatives. So it's about being able to say, this is the standard. And I think the society too, too, needs to play a lot of part, create a lot of awareness, engagement. And when I talk about awareness, if I look at what I see in the UK, you see a lot of adverts. So design like videos that's sponsored on national TV, on a post, gets to tweak with uh, all the social media, uh, social media influencers, because the thing is the world has gone tech. And if you want to see people to align, the industry, the sector must tag into this sector too, tag in with this Gen Z, the millennials, to so see, okay, how do we ensure this uh, society is integrated into the scheme of things. So get them to do all these short, short videos on safety in terms of the engineering, the principles of engineering, how set of engineers is committed to ensuring this is uh, implemented, the protection they give, why you should be a member of the society. Before you know it, the bandwagon will go and the companies will know, okay, these people are there. And gradually, you can even come as a shelter to uh, engineers, to your uh, members, in the case an employer probably wants to intimidate them or not provide the right working environment because nobody wants bad publicity at this time. But if your if your members can give you the true picture of their work environment and say, okay, this is not being implemented, and we think you need to drive it, and you know it, you are churning it all over uh, uh, the print, the social media. You are saying what you, uh, you are making your uh, voice known. You are, the people are seeing all these things. Before you know it, organizations will try to cut themselves some slack in the areas they feel there are gaps. And gradually, with everybody integrating and applying this, we can build a better and improved and safer and safety a committed a society of engineers. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. I think um, we would need to we we'll need to hold it there. And um, if there are any. I can't see much of questions. There are more of comments in the chat. Um, okay. And if there are further questions, please feel free to send to, to us at NSC Manchester. We can we, we, we will definitely pass them on to the speaker who would get us a um, response, which we can then send back to you. 
we're very conscious of time. We've gone way beyond our time, and we need to start thinking about migrating to the um, the general meeting. So, um, if I may, may I ask the may I ask the speaker to please, if you could stop sharing, so I can pull back the, so I can put up the agenda. Thank you. So um, I'll share my screen now. Um, yeah, so I think the next thing we have so is to call on the Assistant General Secretary to give our speaker a vote of thanks. Dr. Teslim Palogu. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, so I want to thank the speaker for his um, for the wonderful presentation that he's given today on safety. I'm sure a lot of us have benefited from it. Um, we also thank all the participants, everyone who has come to listen in, and we also thank you for your questions. Um, we hope you stay with us as we go into the um, general meeting. But well, thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully we get to see you again. Thank you. So thank you very much, um, Dr. Teslim Palogun. Um, may I call on our publicity secretary uh, to please take the group photograph. Uh, Dr. Akilu, you may wish to uh, stop uh, sharing your screen. Yeah, thank you. Whenever, thank you. Yep, I will do now. So um, uh, yeah. if we're in a position to switch on our camera, I think that would be great. So stop sharing.